Hi, I'm Linda Ellers from Great Glass Galore. Today I'm going to teach you how to foil. Foil is the process of wrapping a copper tape around your pieces of glass in your stained glass project. So that's something like this. Okay, so this copper tape, you need this copper tape so the solder has something to stick to. Uh, um, solder, uh, either any of the metals need another metal to stick to. So the solder won't stick to the glass, it's going to need to stick to the copper foil. So first in your process, we're going to go back to your beginner project down here. And you want to create enough gaps for your foil. So really, ideally, you want to be able to move your pieces up and down and side to side. Okay, And if you can't, you don't have enough room for foil. Uh, and sometimes, even if you can, maybe you want to make your gaps look more even. Okay, So if I tilt this up, you can see right here there's a gap and I want to try and make that gap more, more even and so along the same side I'm going to grind where the, the glasses are hitting. So it's hitting here so I'm going to grind in there. It's hitting here I'm going to grind in there and then I'm going to probably grind again a little bit. There's a gap there I won't grind there and I'll grind there. Now that is being extremely picky. If there's enough room as a beginner I would say don't even grind that. It's pretty easy. So another spot where it probably needs some grinding is this spot here. And there's a gap here and a gap here, so I probably would grind some there and maybe a little bit there. So in between those two and those two. The other thing you have to worry about is where two pieces meet. So you want these. Mine look really good. The blue is a hair wider, so you could grind that blue a little right there so that this makes a nice curve and doesn't do a jog or a zigzag. Okay, So it's especially important on this sun. So if you look, really I have a, a, I'll make it a more obvious zigzag here. And this piece sticks out more than this one, so I would probably grind just some like this, even though I have a big enough gap for foil between number 10 and all these pieces, I want this to look like a nice even gap. So I would grind some in there. So as a beginner, again, I am not a beginner. I've been doing this 30 years. So this looks really pretty close to what I'd want it to be. But as a beginner, you're going to have zigzags and you're going to have bigger gaps. Try and make the gaps look even. You know, Try and make your straight edges, push them together, see if they look straight. Those, those fit really good. Those fit, these are a little off. See, there's a little gap here, a little gap here, so I could grind here. Again, that's being way too picky. Okay, that, that, one, looks, that one looks pretty good. You know, you want an even gap through here. So that's what you're looking for, again, if you're really picky. You don't have to be, okay? So now let's go look at some foil. Get this out of the way. So um, this copper foil comes in through uh, three, a bunch of sizes. Okay, so uh, this is a foil dispenser. The foil comes out the bottom here and it actually has the sizes written on the foil dispenser so you can put the right foil in the right boxes. But uh, this is 3 16 foil, the middle is 7 seconds, and the larger size is quarter inch. I start my beginners on 7 seconds inch foil. It should go around almost all your glass sizes. The 3 16 is, is narrower and will go on more of your machine rolled glasses that are really eighth inch, really even. Um, but I try, as a non-beginner, I try and put 3 16 on everything, unless the glass is a little thicker, some of the hand rolled glasses, some of the textures. Then I go to the 7 seconds. So I will mix both sizes in my project. I rarely use quarter inch. Quarter inch is mainly used if you're trying to make your seam look like lead cane because it just makes a really thick solder line and it's hard to solder. There's a lot of solder you have to put in that line. So really, again, we're going to start with the 7 seconds. The other thing is there's different backing types of foil. So you have your regular copper foil. So, so again, this is a, a roll of sticky tape. So the outside isn't sticky, but the backing, this is the, the, this is the part that separates from the actual foil. But the backside is sticky and it normally comes in copper. And you also have black backed and you also have silver backed and you use those three things uh, on your cathedral glasses which is are your see-through glasses and you try and match the color backing to your color of your solder so the solder starts off silver and you can change it to uh, black 
or copper using patina, so using different chemicals. If you're not sure what color you're going to patina, you use black back because it looks like a shadow. Okay, I'll show you an example right here. I don't like to use silver back because it does not stick very well. So, and black back kind of goes with everything. So this is black back foil. So you can kind of see the black backing on this. Again, the side that's sticking to the glass is what is the backing you see. But on the top surface is the copper foil. And then this just shows you silver solder. Okay, and then this one is the copper foil. But you can see if you if you copper foiled and then you soldered silver on your see-through pieces, the, I think the two colors kind of fight the silver and the copper. So um, a lot of the time I will use all black back foil on my see-through pieces, um, even though I don't know what solder color I'm going to do. And on my opaque pieces, I use the copper foil. The reason for using the copper foil, it is half the price of the black back foil. Okay. So now a good foiling job is where you put on the foil real evenly. So all these edges, the, that, the overhang of the foil is all about the same. So if you go to a bad foiling job, you have a couple of problems. One is the seam right here. That's where that arrow is. And I've outlined the seam in black marker and it makes like a jagged area. So it's like having, oh, I was talking about your two sun pieces that connect and you have a jog. You can also end up having that from your foil seam. So if you have one of these, you want to try and exacto off the excess foil. On the other side of this seam, you can see this goes fatter. You've got too much on this side and too little on this side. So you foiled unevenly. Okay, so it's not, you'd think, oh, it's not a big deal, but now if you have a straight edge, and I put these two together, you can see your seam goes from narrower to fatter. Okay, so then you just ruin your straight edge by foiling unevenly. Now, again, with a nature project that has trees and water and flowers like we're doing, you don't have to be quite so picky if you foil unevenly, your solder joints are uneven, um, it still looks pretty good. I've also had people who fit their glass really well and foil really well, their pieces are great, and I've had artists who fit their pieces terribly and foil terribly, but pick amazing glass colors and amazing designs and have beautiful pieces. So there's two extremes in how you foil and how it looks. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, okay? So now we're gonna go foil a piece. So we're back to the project. And um, in general, you usually don't wanna start one of those seams I was talking about, the foiling seam, on an outside edge unless you're framing. And we are gonna frame this, so the frame is gonna cover the outside edges, so we're not worried about the foil seam. But if you're doing a sun catcher with no frame on it, you don't wanna put the seam on the outside edge because the foil can tear apart more easily, okay? So I'm gonna start from a corner, and I'm gonna make sure I have enough room. I can move this up and down. I also wanna make sure my glass is clean and dry. So I'm gonna wipe I can alcohol off any of these black marks. So if I take a cotton ball with some alcohol, I can take those marks off, okay? Um, if your glass looks dusty, if it has this white film on it, it's probably from the grinder and the grinder dust. So that grinder water gets on the glass, it has grinder dust in it and it dries, the foil will not stick. So you'll need to clean your glass either in a sink with soap and water or you can also Windex your glass. The Windex also makes your glass stickier, so the foil sticks a little easier. So let's go to, I'll start foiling a piece. I'm gonna use 730 seconds, like we would in the beginner project. Let me clean up, clean up the edge. Okay, and um, I start by, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna put the foil facing left and then I'm gonna make a hook with my right index finger and I'm gonna put it under the foil, okay? And the foil's gonna rest on my finger in the black, the backing faces up, and I'm gonna separate the back with my thumb, okay? And that's where I wanna start my glass. And I'm gonna start the glass about a quarter of an inch from a, in from a corner. I usually like to try and pick a, a corner that's rel relatively straight. So now I'm starting and I'm trying to put an even amount of foil hanging over the back side and an even amount hanging over the front. And again, I'm, I've got that hook and I'm gonna stick it under the foil and I'm gonna work in an upward direction, okay? So as I work, I am looking right here. I'm looking where the foil is just starting to stick. I'm not looking down the side because you've already stuck foil there. There's no reason to look down the side unless you want a headache. 
you really are looking right here. How much is foil is hanging off here and how much foil is hanging off here. So now you'll discover if you need to go to the eye doctor and get a checkup. Um, also, you, you know, it may be a little difficult at first to do this, but your, your eyes will get used to it. Most people who do close-up work like sewing or knitting or uh, that kind of thing will pick this up pretty easily. Other people sometimes, if you haven't done a lot of close-up work, will have trouble with this. But again, that hook goes underneath and I'm working in an upward direction, okay? So now this method works well for me. I am right-handed and right-eye dominant. So that means my right eye is looking over at the foil. So I can cross over and look at it. If, I, if I'm right-handed and left-eye dominant, it's very hard for my left eye to look over. Sometimes you'll have to have the glass face you. But I actually can do this this way. And if you see it goes off and it's uneven, you can pull some off and redo it if it looks uneven. Now I'm coming back to the beginning where I started my foil. And I'm going to look and check that this is on evenly. And that looks pretty good. If it isn't, you can lift, lift it up and reseat it. Okay, and try and make it even. If you don't make it even, it's not a big deal. We can clean it up with an X-Acto. And now I'm going to overlap all the way to the end, and I'm going to cut it at the end here. I like to use small scissors. These are Fiskars. These are great. Or sewing scissors. If you don't want to use big clunky ones, it's harder to work with. Okay. So now I need to crimp the foil down. What does that mean? It means I need to push it over the edge. So I'm going to push this over the edge. And when I get to a corner, I use my fingernails and I crease that side and I overlap the, the next. Now, I am now doing this left-handed instead of right-handed because I'm missing that half of that right thumb. I lost that when I was only a year old. So, um, and I was in and out of the cast for the first year and I was kind of a hyperactive kid. I actually walked at six months and was climbing out of my crib by a year old. And um, I was learning how to throw a ball between the ages of one and two. So I ended up becoming ambidextrous. I do a lot of sports with my left hand, but I write with my right hand. And I can foil with my left hand, and I can solder with my left hand. I can go back and forth. So um, now we've got it crimped down on both sides. Um, and if you see any corners that are black, that means that if the black backing is facing up, you don't want that, the solder won't stick to it. You can try, and you, I don't have any on this one, but you can, if you see black stuff, you can try and use your fingernail to flip it back over to the front side. That usually works pretty well. Now you need to push the foil down even more. So first you're going to push down the eye outside, and I like to put my glass on the table, then I can get a good amount of pressure here. Okay, so I'm using a dowel run through a pencil sharpener. Any tools that uh, you use to burnish the foil, is what it's called, or push down the foil, are called FIDS. It's spelled F-I-D-S. So I'm going to burnish down the foil. I'm going to do all the outside outsides first while I'm putting the glass on the table. The glass hits the table. Otherwise, if you try and do this, you don't press so hard if you hold it up with your hands. So I'm gonna use, now I'm going to foil, I'm going to burnish the top and bottom, or bottom and top. It doesn't ma matter which way. If you have bevels, you usually do the bottom first and then the top. But So now I'm going to use the angle here, and I'm going to get in here, and I'm going to brush back and forth. Okay, And maybe three or four times. I usually do it. Sometimes I just do it once. I get enough pressure. But don't do it a dozen times. Then you'll be foiling all day if you do that. So now I'll flip it over. I'll do the other side. The other thing I do is I work with my dowel away from the glass and then in. I don't go cross over the glass and do this because you tend to push the foil off. So I work from the outside in also. Again, not a big deal if you push it off. It's just more work for you to try and get it back on. Okay, so that, that's the front side. That looks pretty good. And I just want to show you the back side. It's probably going to be hard to see. We have a, one of those little catches. It's it's so tiny, it's on the back side, I wouldn't worry about it. But if I, I were to worry about it, I would take an X-Acto. Oh, this one's not very sharp. but And then I would just try and clean up a little of that, that edge so it looks more even. Okay? So that is uh, the foil. We're going to stick that in. It looks pretty good. And now I can move on to the next one and foil that. Okay? So um, 
The other types of things we'll talk about is this is just a dowel I've bought at Home Depot cut up into um, six inches long and run through a pencil sharpener. You can also buy what's called a fiddle stick. So these come in different colors. They're plastic. So the head will last longer. This I, it wears down and I have to run it through a pencil sharpener again. Not a big deal. It also with this little bar on there doesn't roll off the table. Sometimes you, these disappear and you have to go looking for another one. Um, you, you have these kind of tools. You have uh, things that look like awls, but you can, I've seen people use all sides of this in ends to burnish down the floor. So I've seen all kinds of things like that. Um, if you do have, if you do have uneven foil, so if you had uneven foil like this, where it starts off wider and goes narrower, you can actually just add a second piece of foil on from here to here. So you can try and even it on with a second layer of foil. If you, um, but I don't recommend a third layer that starts to take up room and then it fits funny when you put it back in the jig. Also, if you're doing tight inside curves and you get tears, you can add a second piece of foil over to fix those. But if you want to take foil off, the easiest thing is to use a paint scraper or something with a razor blade in it. And then that way you can scrape the foil off. Otherwise, it's really stuck pretty good. It's hard to get off with your fingers. Okay. So um, the other thing about foil is um, it does get old. So foil does get old. So as when as you've seen copper, it turns uh, green. And when it does, you cannot get the solder to stick. So really, uh, things that'll make foil uh, age is humidity and sunlight. So when I started doing stained glass, I was doing it on the East Coast in Massachusetts. And really, you had to foil all your pieces within a month and solder within a month. Otherwise, they started to turn green. Here in Colorado, you can let it go for years sometimes, and it's okay. I had somebody leave their project for two years, and it was okay. But I had somebody leave their project for two years and move to Oklahoma and back, and it was totally green. And she actually had to take all the foil off and start over. So I don't recommend that. If you're going to store your piece foiled for any length of time, there's kind of two options. One, you can stick all the pieces in a Ziploc bag and use a desiccant in the bag to help keep it dry. The desiccant is like what you see in pills to keep your pills from um, getting too much humidity. It keeps your pills dry. They come in packets and cylinders. You can stick those in the Ziploc. Just be careful, those are really bad for your pets, so don't leave those out anywhere. You can also, if your piece is big and you have all the pieces in a jig, you can cover it with saran wrap, and I usually put it under a bed or a table so it's out of the light, so it's not getting any light. And it usually lasts a long time that way. So that concludes the foiling video for today. Um, have a good time and get those eyes checked.